on the topic of UV, I think it's really interesting how this wavelength that's used in a lot of really doctored industrial processes are also used in things like soil monitoring, water analysis, and agriculture. You know, we're going out of the clean room and into literally the dirt. Um, I think monitoring these spaces are going to be more and more important as time moves forward. You know, the world population is, is continually growing. Uh, we're going to need higher quality food, safer water. We're going to need all of these factors to, to sustain it. So Eric, um, can you speak a little bit about how our light sources could be used um, within these application spaces? Yeah, sure. So um, definitely uh, water analysis is a great example where, um, you know, there's uh, factors that are driving the need to uh, develop new technologies uh, in this industry. So, you know, diminishing water resources um, is driving the need for water reuse. Um, you also have uh, tighter regulations on, you know, wastewater uh, from, you know, production and manufacturing environments, whether it be, you know, pharmaceutical or, or even food production. Uh, and then there's also, you know, the regu regular public drinking water, right? There's, there's uh, uh, contaminants that we need to measure in, in public drinking water. Um, and in, in most cases, uh, or in the past, we've seen a trend of, you know, being able to take a sample of the water, take it to a lab, uh, get your results and then make a decision based on that information. But um, uh, it would be very beneficial to be able to make those decisions quickly. Um, and in order to do that, you have to measure in line and, and you know at, at the source of the water. And in order to do that, I think light source from a light source standpoint, you need a compact, high power, uh, and perhaps even broadband to allow you to you know interact with many different wavelengths of light. Um, so something like a, a xenon flash lamp, you know, compact module might be something that you'd see in, in, in an instrument such as like a submersible probe or a compact field use, you know, spectrometer. Um, so I think the, the compact uh, nature of the, of the devices is really key. And Brandon, you mentioned, you know, the, the food supply and the population growth and things like that. So you know, there's a lot of pressure and, um, put on farmers and um, in the agricultural industry, there's, there's they've been using um, fertilizers for a long time um, and nitrogen being one of the more popular fertilizers and that can run off into our drinking water, into supply chain wa water um, sources. Um, so having the ability in, uh, UV becomes more important because the absorption of certain um, constituents um, such as uh, nitride and, and nitrate are um, in the ultraviolet range. So um, water analysis companies don't need to add like a reagent to the mix um, to, to create a fluorescence. They can directly measure the UV absorption of, um, of those um, chemicals um, using uh, spectroscopy techniques, using a spectrometer and oftentimes a, a xenon flash lamp. Um, so water and, and soil are often connected and there's a lot of um, soil analysis being done um, as well, although that doesn't use near, uh, I'm sorry, that doesn't use ultraviolet light that generally uses more uh, near infrared techniques. And uh, also, I guess, to, <clears throat> to look at the soil, which is the important part of farming agriculture market, um, the newer techniques now like hyperspectral where they're looking at multiple spectral informations to identify the, uh, the particular substance or the, the health of the, the soil or the plant health, uh, et cetera, et cetera, are enabling uh, this uh, agriculture market to be, uh, to cover larger areas of like inspection uh, and more faster, more efficiently. And together with LiDAR, I think coming back to LiDAR technology again, uh, now you can uh, have that uh, LiDAR added to give you another level of information. Uh, not only you have the spectral information, now you can also have distance information, the location information, uh, which is very helpful to uh, quickly identify which part of the field, I guess, will have it's problematic or healthy and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I think um, uh, Aubrey, you have a lot of experience in the hypertrack spectral technique with the customers that we are working with. Right? Do you want to expand a little more about that? Sure. Actually, um, in the past, actually, for a typical near infrared short wave, we talk about like up to 1.7 micron. That could only collect 
very little information. But nowadays, with the fabrication capability, uh, showing benefit actually detectors could go all the way up to 2.5 micron. It gives benefits, for example, if you're using like a drone to kind of like overview the landscape and monitor the landscape. Um, you could, in the past, you could only monitor kind of like maybe the water distribution, maybe like some sweetness distribution. Um, but nowadays with the extended uh, AI, uh, no, sorry, extended show of infrared capability, uh, it opens up the possibility for people to also monitor kind of like the fertilizer distribution or even the mineral distributions as well. I think that's, that's really interesting because you have the uh, agricultural process uh, where food is planted and grown, uh, but then you also have the other side towards the, you know, the tail end where food is uh, uh, packaged and inspected. Uh, and in, in both of those cases, I think there's opportunity for photonic technology to um, move things from uh, more traditional offline to inline um, type of, of processes. Yeah, and spectrometers and spectroscopy have um, shrunk dramatically in, in the recent years. I mentioned earlier, you know, the tiny microspectrometer um, and, and the, the reduction in the size of these um, scientific instruments essentially um, allow users to now bring those spectroscopy solutions out into the field. Um, the traditional method has always been to send a sample to the lab, and, and that those these methods are, are done today. I think we probably all see it in our daily lives, too, of like, okay, we're going to send the sample to the lab. We've got to wait a couple of weeks to get the results back. But with the trend of reducing the size of spectroscopy solutions, the reducing the size of spectrometers, we're really moving towards the, the, the days of being able to send the instrumentation out into the field and monitor these things more in real time. But I guess that's not the only thing, right? There's also uh, the different parts of uh, food industry where we see the, uh, not only to inspect the soil and the water uh, at uh, the site, but also now when you go to the inspection of the actual product, it's also we also see some difference in uh, improving the optical technology to help with that, right? Yeah, that, correct? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Actually, um, for like imaging, for example, in the past, people have been using monochromatic cameras uh, doing kind of like inline inspection. Uh, typically, I don't even identifying like shapes or obvious defects. Uh, but nowadays, with the improvement of fabrication capability, um, now we could use RGB and our cameras to identify colors or even like some very or like near infrared information or even you want to go like further infrared like to, to show you infrared we're talking about like could do um, moisture content identification or maybe foreign objects or even like um, I like looking at the package you could see like the leakage on the side using this camera as well so Albert, I have a frequently asked question for you. We get this at every trade show, we get this on our website a lot, and it's time for you to sync it once and for all. Can SWIR imaging, can it see through packaging? So uh, yes and no. So I can't sync it at once at all. Uh, but like uh, for some specific t uh, conditions, yes. So it's like maybe some paper packaging or like some plastic. Yeah, I could see through some packages. But for typical packaging, I would say more likely to be used like x-ray technologies we used in this case. Right, Andy? Yeah, I'd agree with that, Albert. So yeah, we see x-ray used uh, throughout the food formation process, really. So incoming bulk products coming from the field get x-ray inspected, uh, in process food, food formation, uh, uh, in process uh, x-ray is used uh, for quality checks. Um, container integrity is checked for bottles and cans using x-rays and then finally once all of those come together in a final package and sealed hermetically um, those seals can be inspected with x-ray with low energy and very high resolution x-ray detectors and and then also we all uh, see more and more x-ray applications coming online uh, where traditionally metal detectors were used in the past right so x-ray has a few advantages there in that it can detect uh, both metal and non-metallic products, right, in the same scan. So you can um, find things like bones and stones and uh, glass uh, contaminants inside your packaging. And the second thing is um, 
you know, that the, uh, they can identify, x-ray can identify missing or broken items inside a package, which metal detectors cannot, obviously. And then the final thing is that, um, you know, more and more uh, uh, suppliers or, or food providers are trying to get the best uh, freshness of their products and using more and more foil packaging. And metal detector has a hard time with foil packaging, so x-ray can be used there. Um, so yeah, x-ray is used extensively to, throughout the food inspection market. Yeah, thanks for taking us through the x-ray packaging side of things. You know, it, it really seems like x-ray is still the king when it comes to getting depth information and also for seeing through different materials. Thank you.